against someone for their political views is already legal in America. Uh, you can get kicked off of Twitter and Facebook for being a conservative. You can be banned from payment processing platforms like WePay and blocked from raising money on GoFundMe. You can even be removed from the Internet uh, like we saw with Parler. So what's the next step for political discrimination in this country? So if Canada is any indication of what's next, it's being denied mortgages for your political views. It's just about the nature of the business altogether, because uh, uh, the bank has been, uh, I'll be blunt with you, the bank has been, you know, trying to pry away from certain, you know, uh, clients where they're kind of out there in the media and uh, very strong opinionated, you know, uh, which is your business in a way. So we're just uh, clearing some internal hurdles to make sure that uh, the bank is okay to uh, kind of uh, onboard you as a client internally. Spoiler alert, we did not clear those hurdles, even though I've done all of my personal banking at that same Royal Bank branch for decades. As well, Avant is the man you just saw in that clip. He was speaking to a banker from the Royal Bank of Canada. He is the founder of Rebel News and says he was denied a mortgage because of his conservative views. Ezra Levant joins us now. So Ezra, um, the, in, this, in the video clip we played, it wasn't quite clear if you were being denied because of your political views or if it's just because you're a, a media personality who has a public presence. Um, what was it? It was very clearly our views. Uh, I, I had several discussions with that uh, mortgage officer I just want to make it clear that our mortgage uh, application was financially sound. Uh, if he would have said it wasn't financially sound, I probably would have believed him. But he was candid with me. I call him a sort of whistleblower. He said it was our opinions because Rebel News, the news site that I run, has conservative opinions. And the Royal Bank is Canada's largest bank. I should say they do a lot of business in communist China. And I wonder if they have brought some of that social credit approach that they have to use in China to Canada. And by the way, they have thousands of clients in the United States, too. And discriminating against people based on uh, inappropriate grounds, if you're a bank, is called redlining. And that's illegal in the States. Uh, I only caught this because this banker at the local branch really wanted to give me the mortgage. He said he was fighting against the head office and that it was the head office that vetoed this mortgage application. I think social credit, as they call it in China, or cancel culture, is here in North America. Banks in America, too. Remember, Royal Bank is in America as well. So I don't know if you know this, Ezra, but I was on the Financial Services Committee when I was in Congress. And under the Obama era, they had a program called Operation Choke Point, where the federal regulators, the FDIC, would put pressure on banks to stop banking gun dealers, um, smoke shops, small dollar lenders. And in essence, if you can't bank, and you know this as well, if you can't bank, if you can't cash checks, if you can't process credit card payments, you can't do business in America. So the power of banking to just live your life is incredibly powerful if you can't access it, right? Yeah, and in Canada, we have far fewer banks, and they have much more power. The Royal Bank is the largest bank in Canada. I should tell you, there's a revolving door between Justin Trudeau's liberals and the Royal Bank. Uh, Trudeau's first ambassador to China was a senior RBC bank executive. He was awful, by the way. Uh, Trudeau just appointed another RBC executive to the Senate. So I think it's a, a political, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. A Rebel News is hated by Justin Trudeau. We're one of the few conservative media in this country. Trudeau's made that clear. It wouldn't surprise me if the bank was doing him a favor, considering how many favors he does them. They received, you know, Canadian banks received enormous bailouts over the years. They get tremendous privileges, uh, even more than U.S. banks get. And I think this is a political quid pro quo. You don't want your banks to have a political criteria when it comes to mortgages. I mean, really, even convicted murderers, when they get out of jail, are allowed to get a bank account. Imagine punishing conservatives and deplatforming them. I think this is a scandal. I only found out about it by accident because I had an honest local banker. I bet you this is more prevalent than we think. I, I, and how would you know if they never actually had a whistleblower tell you? Ezra, you're 100% right. But what, what's interesting with banking is that they need the government. So in the, in the States, uh, banks have FDIC insurance, right? So if banks want to be political, well, politics can be po political as well. And if you want to take away woke banks 
FDIC insurance, or you can take away their charter, their charter by the, the federal government or by a state government. Those are all tools that conservatives have when they get into leadership to address this wokeism that's happening in the banking industry. We're going to continue to follow this. It is going to be, I think, an increasing uh, phenomenon across the country. So, uh, Ezra, thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me.